I've done a lot with fragment shaders, which change the pixels of an image, but nothing with vertex shaders, which... I guess they change the vertices? Let's give them a go. So my hypothesis here is that changing the vertex variable will change where each vertex is. So if I set them all to zero, this cube should become infinitesimal, and it looks like that's just what happens. And if I add to the Y component, it should move up and down, which also works just as planned. Good stuff. If I add the vertex value to itself, that should double the value, and thus double the size of the cube. Here's me trying to make a thing that moves each vertex differently. It works, it deforms the cube a little, but it isn't that obvious. There we go. Now this one's warping it more clearly. This shit is fun as hell! Haha, <laughs> wee! Look at it go! I tried applying the same shader to a sphere, and it looks like a bunch of papers or something. I imagine this is because it uses way more vertices than the box. The lighting is kind of funky on these, and to fix that I think that what's needed is to change the normal value. Normal should be a vector that indicates the direction each point on the surface is facing. To confirm this theorem, I set the normal to a static value. If I'm right, it should appear completely unshaded. For a laugh, I flipped the normals, and now it looks evil. I figured out you could add more vertices to the cube to make it wiggle better. I couldn't figure out how to make the normals correct, so instead I did something else. Here's a plane. It's not clear exactly what the values of vertex are in various places, so I'm trying to figure that out because I want to do something cool. Check it out, I made a height map thing, where the height of the plane changes based on a black and white image. Which, shit, without changing the normals, you can barely see it. Well, that... sort of worked. Turns out one important step is making the surface darker than pure white, so that the shading can be seen easier. Looks pretty funky still, though. Here it is with more vertices. This is dumb, I'm gonna add colour. Here's that, I made it change colour based on the height. I guess I'm getting into fragment shaders now, though should probably stay vaguely on topic. I had an idea of how to sort out the normals of other shapes, though. Pretty much the plan is to find some nearby points on the surface of the shape and check where they are. If I could find out where they are, then I could figure out which way the surface is pointing with a simple cross product, which should be its normal. Well that didn't bloody work, how did it? After blindly tweaking some stuff, I made it look kind of alright. Close examination reveals this to still be wrong, but I'm short on time to make and post this video so this will have to do. For reference, the reason I think this is wrong is that it's only checking points on one side of the vertex in question, which leads to inaccuracies when the vertex is at a peak or in a valley. One part of correcting that would be to check points on both sides of the vertex, but that would cause a different problem in situations like this, where both peaks and valleys will appear to be flat, and if there's no vertices in between them, then the whole area might appear to be flat too. I think the solution may lie in a fragment shader, so I'll leave that for another time. What's next? Don't know. Bye, wee.